Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Trokakis. On the menu today, we have filet of sole infused with brandy, Italian style lentils, and a sweet and spiced fruit aspect. So let's get started. First thing I want to start with, as we often do, is, is start with dessert. So with dessert, we're going to do the fruit, the sweet and spiced fruit aspect. And um, so we're going to make the uh, usually aspects sort of um, we think of it as, as being savory, uh, but we are going to um, have a, a sweet uh, aspect, and we're going to make that from scratch using unflavored gelatin. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut up a pear. So we're going to use pears orange sections and bananas, and then for a special coloring and, and treat of uh, some raspberries. Um, so I'm gonna cut the pear into cute little cubes. So they'll look pretty when we put them in the bowl. So I'm just cutting up the pear here, and I'm using a Bosque pear. So you can use your favorite. And you want a pear that's not very ripe, so you, you want it to be a little resistant to the touch. When you press on it, you don't want it to give. You want it to be fairly hard. Because what we're going to do is cook this in this special syrup that will consist of um, some water, some um, cinnamon stick, and maple syrup. And to that, I'm also going to add uh, an inch or so of um, uh, ginger. All right, so the pears all cut up. I'm going to put this here in the water. And I'm going to cook this for about, we'll bring it to a boil and then cook it for about five minutes. Because you, you want the pear to be tender, but you don't want it to cook thoroughly because then it gets a little mushy. OK, so then I'm going to add about one inch or so, oops, one inch or so of um, ginger, fresh ginger. You know, ginger is one of those things that there's a big difference between, you know, the, the ground ginger in the, in the bottle and the fresh one. They're totally different flavors. I use the, the, the fresh one all the time. And I just cut it into big pieces. Put that in here. Okay, so that's going. I'm done with that. And then I'm going to add one stick of cinnamon a cinnamon stick, I'll put in the larger piece. That goes in. And then I'm also going to sweeten it up a little bit by adding about three tablespoons of um, maple syrup. So I add about three tablespoons. You can add more or less depending on how sweet you want it. I think three is just about perfect. So, I've at, so in here right now I have um, a cup of water, one pear chopped up in small cubes, a stick of um, cinnamon, some, uh, but an inch or so of ginger, and maple syrup, as that's the, the kind of, that I prefer in here. You can use honey if you like, but I prefer maple syrup. So give that a mix. I'm going to put a lid on it, bring it to a boil, and let it, let it cook for about five minutes. I mean, actually, once it comes to a boil, I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to soften the gelatin. So in here I have one cup of cold water, just from tap water. And I'm going to put two um, envelopes of this unflavored gelatin to let that dissolve. So in my cooking liquid for the, um, for the pear, I measured up one cup because that's the one cup of hot water that I'm going to use to um, help soften and dissolve the, um, the gelatin. All right, so I'm going to put this aside and let that soften. In the meantime, I'm going to take this, this um, orange and I'm going to section it. This is a big, beautiful orange. And um, I know I've said this many times, we get a, a lot of our produce from um, Calories' Farm Stand and Garden Center. They provide us with many of the things, uh, many of the ingredients that we use. And they have, a, they have a lot more in there in the store than just produce. So oftentimes we pick up other things too. So what I'm going to do is um, come around here in the orange and just cut out the section. I don't want the white part. I like the, sometimes you can't help it. As I think I've just gotten some on that little piece, but oh well. 
So I'm going to come around and just cut each one. And it doesn't take very long. It looks like it might, but it doesn't. There we go. One's done. There we go. As you know, on this show, we're all about eating healthy and eating delicious. And this is like one perfect example. So here I have my orange sections. The fruit's boiling, so I'm going to lower the heat here a little bit just so that it simmers. And the pear cooks. There we go. I think the pear is done. So I'm going to take this off. Let that cool for a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to um, put in the banana. And what's really interesting is that the banana does not darken when it's in there. So I'm just going to use some of it, not the whole thing, because this was a larger than I wanted to use. Just put this in here. And again, you can make these pieces as big or as small as you'd like. Then, back to my gelatin here that's been chilling out here or softening. And stir it a little bit. And then I'm going to add the um, juice from the pear. I'm going to measure out a cup. In a mess. So this goes in. Make sure it dissolves. Let it sit for a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to take the cinnamon stick out of here. I'm going to take the ginger out of here and the other piece. There we go. I'm going to add this. It's a little bit um, more liquid in here, but that's okay. I'm going to add this to the mix here. Give that a quick toss. And then I'm going to add the gelatin. Oh, the other thing you can do if you want to make this, you know, sort of give it your own spin on it, you can use any kind of bowl that you want. You can get whatever design you want or appearance. So then I'm going to add about half a cup to a little more than half a cup of raspberries because I love, I love the flavors that it gives it and I love the, the way the color looks. Just kind of brightens it up. So one other thing that we're going to add might just be something that is sort of unexpected. And what that is, I am going to crumble some uh, Amoretti cookies on, um, on top, about three or four of these small little Italian almond macaroni, uh, macaroon, excuse me, these small Italian macaroon Amoretti cookies. So I'm just going to crumble it, whatever small, you know, you're going to get crumb, crumbs and you're going to get some pieces that are bigger, some are smaller. You can put as many as you'd like. I like about three or four, just enough to kind of add a little texture when you're, um, when you're eating it. So I'm going to put this away. So this chills for like overnight it's perfect, but it, I've noticed, I found that it chills in about three or four hours in the refrigerator. And through magic called being prepared, we have one already made. So when it's done, It looks like this. How is that? Isn't that beautiful? And um, what I like to do, 
So you can you can unmold this. You can unmold it. You know, put it in wa hot water and let, and I'll unmold it, and you can flip it over. But what I like to do, because I think it's really a lot of fun, is to scoop it out, like with an ice cream scooper. How's that? Isn't that pretty? Really unexpected. Sometimes, especially when you have people over and you do the ordinary stuff and they just do something unexpected. And to go with this, of course, a few extra cookies. Like, and who wouldn't love that? There we go. And you know what? We could probably do a third scoop because it's fruit. There we go. How's that? I think it makes a lovely little dessert. Okay. So the next um, dish that we're going to make is the Italian style lentils. And this is my own creation. I actually, actually, it was an award winning um, recipe in a contest that I entered. So. Uh, so these are the lentils, and what you, we're going to do is um, sort of make it into a side dish with, so it can be served cold or, or at room temperature or even hot if you'd like. So the first thing you'd want to do is cook them, cook the, your lentils in, uh, according to the package directions, usually it's about four cups of water, a cup of lentils, which then turn, in turn makes about three cups. So you cook a cup of lentils in, um, in water, and the only thing that I do that's different than what the uh, package directions tell you in general is I add a bay leaf. Um, so I add a bay leaf when I'm cooking it, and that gives it a really nice um, aroma too. So um, I do have already um, some already cooked here. And I'm using green lentils, but you can use any kind. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up about half a cup of um, scallions. So I'm going to chop these up. This is really simple. And the, the nice thing about the lentils is that unlike beans, you don't have to soak them. And you can also cook them way in advance. So they'll, they're ready um, when you need them. As you can see, one cup cooks into a lot, about three cups. And when it comes to legumes, things like uh, lentils and beans and chickpeas and stuff like that, I often cook them and just keep them in the refrigerator. For, and, and they're good for about a week. And they're so versatile, so you can use them in any recipe that you like. Sometimes I even make um, hummus with lentils. All right, so these are all chopped up. So I'm going to take my plate. And spoon these in here. As I said, one cup makes a lot. So to this, I'm going to add about um, a quarter teaspoon of salt. Oh, there we go. You don't have to be exact. There we go. And some um, pepper. I'm going to toss these. And then to this, I'm going to also add the scallions here. Well, this is about half a cup. that in here. Then I'm also going to toss in here is the some basil. About half a cup of basil as well. And I'm going to reserve some for um, garnishing later. If you want to do a little pre-prepping, uh, the scallions you can certainly chop up ahead of time. The basil, I wouldn't recommend it. I often don't wash basil till the last minute, which is what I did today, right before we started here. 
All right, so this is about half a cup. Put this in here. Reserving a few pieces for later. I'm gonna get another spoon and sort of toss it like it was pasta. So I'm gonna put these aside and now I'm gonna mix the dressing for it. And the dressing is, there's, ingredient, there's three simple ingredients, but they are so unique and that they bring in so much flavor. So I have two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar in here, two tablespoons of olive oil, and then, ready, with the magic ingredient, I have two tablespoons of run-of-the-mill tomato paste, and that goes in here. And this just really makes this dish. I think that's why it won first prize. It's so unexpected. You just wouldn't expect to see tomato paste in a dressing. But I do have to admit that, um, well, this was fairly original. However, um, I, was in, I was in Greece this past summer. I'm just whisking this, well, with the spoon. I'm just mixing to dissolve the, um, the tomato paste. So I was in um, Greece this summer, and we were at this restaurant, and there, you know, when they bring up the bread, they all usually bring out some topping to go with it. And at this really fancy restaurant, they had um, this red stuff, and they had some oil, and I think in some other kind of a dipping um, uh, sauce. And that was pretty sure it tasted to me like it was tomato paste dressed with, um, you know, some salt, pepper, oil, typical European, uh, typical Mediterranean um, you know, uh, dressing items. And so that's where I really got the idea about introducing the tomato paste in, with the uh, lentils. And I knew I had a winner in my hand when um, my husband liked it, my sister-in-law liked it. So I knew that was a good sign. So they, they all love this recipe. So then just toss this. I'm actually going to add a little bit more salt and pe pepper and then some salt in the tomato sauce here, the dressing, which I probably should have done earlier, but it doesn't matter. Again, to taste. So you can always add more later. There's a lot of green in here, which is kind of nice because, you know, sometimes lentils sort of have a, not a very appealing color. So I think the green really sort of freshens them up. There we go. And then some basil on the side for garnish. There we go. There you have it. These are delicious. There we go. Put those there. Clean up time again. All right, so the next um, dish that we're going to cook is the main entree, and that is the filet of sole infused with brandy. And in this pan here, I'm going to turn on the heat on high. And I'm going to add about two to three tablespoons of olive oil. To that, I'm going to add a clove of garlic, which I probably should have had ready. Wow, these are huge. I'm just going to use just half because that was a big clove. I'm going to add some scallions here as well just to flavor the oil a little bit. As you'll see, there's not too many ingredients in this recipe. Um, this, in this fish recipe is just it's ready in less than in just about five minutes from start to finish. 
So I'm gonna chop these up and cook them in there to flavor the oil. Seems like scallion is the ingredient of the day. Sometimes when you're cooking, one item makes it into all the dishes that you're doing. And then some other times, you have 10 million different ingredients. So here I have my filet of sole. You can use other um, flat fish like uh, tilapia if you like flounder. Although I find flounder to be a little bit, a little bit too thin. This is a nice thickness. I don't know if you can see this. This is a nice thickness, about a quarter of an inch. And then at the other, at the more, at the thinner end, might be a little too thin. You could cut it off if you'd like, but you don't have to. Oh, there we go. So I'm using uh, brandy. If you don't have brandy at home, if you don't typically you drink brandy and you don't have it at home, just buy one of these little quarter bottles. They're perfect for something like this. Like this. I'm going to measure it. I think it's about a quarter of, of uh, a, a cup. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to put that aside. And then I'm going to um, dip, uh, sort of, not do a batter, but I'm going to dip my fish in egg white first and then in some flour. About, no, oh, I don't know, half a cup or thereabouts. I'm going to also add some salt and pepper to this, to the flour, just to give it some flavor. You could also flavor your fish if you'd like with some, again, salt and, and pepper. Mix this up. In here I have like one um, beaten egg. It doesn't seem like a lot because it's a big flat dish, but I, you don't need a lot, just a little. All right, so this here is nice and hot. I'm gonna lower it a little bit. And then you kind of want to move quickly. So I'm gonna dip. There, and I'm going to dip here. Ooh, it's getting really hot. I'm going to move it off a little bit. Put that in there. You don't want to flour your fish too far in advance because then it will sort of get soggy. I'm going to move the greens out of the way. I might just do three. Um, I think I have four fillets. I might just do three because uh, that's all the room I have in the pan. So you might, oftentimes you need to do this kind of stuff in, in batches, and that's okay. Mix up my hands. All right, so then comes the tricky part. And I like to have this kind of spatula, especially for like fish or so or real uh, or very um, delicate items. It really goes to the bottom. There we go. Turn, turn it off. Oh, isn't that beautiful? This is it as far as the cookie goes. There's not much left. So once I flip it over, I'm going to add. I'm going to add the brandy. I'm always nervous that the sprinklers are going to go off. I'm going to lower it a little bit and let it cook for about a minute or two. About one minute. Just enough for me to clean up here some more. Let's check. Ah, perfect. I'm going to turn this off. Let some of this um, steam escape. Too heavy, didn't reach enough. Okay, I still need my spatula. All right, so it's ready, so I'm gonna take it off. 
And look at that. Actually, I should leave it here. How beautiful is that? And I can smell the brandy as well. I don't want that to break off. How's that? And then and then I'm going to garnish this with a little bit of uh, fresh parsley. I don't want to add too much uh, parsley on top because I really don't want to hide the, the fish because it looks so pretty. All right, here we go. How is that? How is this for a quick and simple, almost weeknight um, meal that you can put together for your family and they'll never know that it took you almost just about half an hour. So today we have here with us uh, that we've made the brandy infused uh, filet of sole with some um, with some parsley sprinkled on top. We have an award-winning uh, Italian-style lentil recipe with, um, with the tomato paste in the dressing that just gives it a kick, makes it, um, sort of gives it the Italian flair. And we've also made sort of um, this really delicious um, fruit mold using um, some spices such as um, cinnamon and maple syrup and ginger that gives it a real kick. And we've added, um, with the um, raspberries that also sort of have a really um, interesting flavor with a, a plus adding some nice color to it. So we have bananas um, and pears and we have um, orange and the um, raspberries. And that's it for today. How is that for a quick dinner? Um, I want to thank Calories of Farm Standing Garden Center for, produce, for providing a lot of these ingredients. And I want to thank you for joining us, and please do it again soon. Thank you, and bye-bye.